When the moment a Pokemon game allows us to catch the titular creatures hiding in the tall grass, the game imparts this sense of you being a part of a team. This Pokemon you just caught is now a member of your team. And like most games that feature a party system, you're given executive control over your team and no one can take that team from you. And of course this goes for everyone. Other players, other trainers. Normal circumstances prevent you from taking Pokemon from other people. Don't be a thief! At least that's what the game will say if you try to be one, before blocking your attempt to take what isn't yours. And if not just learning out of curiosity for what happens, some games will have other characters that just explicitly let you know. Now in moments like these, I like to head to Bulbapedia and search to my heart's content, because there's always more to learn about Pokemon. So let's get... oh. It would seem on account of this blue screen that there will be no more browsing today. But after doing some research of my own, I discovered that it wasn't my computer, but rather my browser throttling my PC. So I switched to Opera GX, the sponsor of today's video. Now I can have 100 tabs open as I research e-reader cards in peace using GX Control, giving me personal limit control over CPU and RAM usage by the browser. And now that I'm back in control of my browsing experience, I think it's high time for my browsing to be an experience. I got set up with this Pokemon Emerald GX mod that has my computer looking and sounding like Gen 3. I got this beautiful animated wallpaper with Mei and her new flying friend. There's dancing waves, the winds in her hair. It's all beautiful. And then it's got these sounds for opening and closing tabs, hovering and clicking on saved pages, and even messing around with the settings. One of which being background music. Now this is an experience. I also really like the GX Corner, which is pretty much a game and game deals aggregator with a lot of Nintendo Power type articles mixed in. And the menus are very customizable, so it's been easy for me to shop around for new games and be shown good ones I might be interested in too. Right now there's this advent calendar set up for their best games of 2023. I keep hearing good things about Sea of Stars, and I think I'm going to give it a chance. I'm also currently really enjoying the new Yakuza game. Just a little confused right now who this Joryu character is, but he seems great, and I'm sure Kiryu will be back any second now. The only concern I had when I switched was getting my settings and preferences moved over, because I'm very particular about that kind of thing. But they even have a tool for that process too. Now I'm not much for speedrunning anymore, but let's see how quick and easy I can get this done. Incredible. A new record. You can download Opera GX for free using the link in the description or the pinned comment. And big thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. This woman in Emerald states that you're a thief if you try to steal someone else's Pokemon. You should throw Pokeballs only at wild Pokemon. Words to live by, random stranger. Other games directly vilify those who do steal, like the dastardly Team Rocket, who are portrayed as the scum of the earth for their thieving and villainous ways. And they need to be stopped by you, the shining hero of the region who hates stealing and loves justice. Well, the concept is straightforward enough, but is it always just that simple? Is stealing always as inappropriate as these games make it seem? Probably the situation that most prominently comes to mind here are the Shadow Pokemon in the GameCube's Colosseum and XD Gala Darkness. We are specifically instructed to steal these corrupted Pokemon using the latest and greatest in stealing technology, the Snag Machine. Shadow Pokemon have been deemed a great enough threat that you need to steal them back in order to purify their corrupted hearts. These two games turn that original idea of the team on its head with this new, rebellious way to play Pokemon, and it's all tied up in a proper setting for the job. The dried up desert locale, the more gruff attitude and style of the people, the darker nature of the villains. This is a more mature scenario that calls for stealing to even the score. But as awesome as this is, and make no mistake, it is awesome, just look at this bike. It is still effectively the other side of the coin. There's still no real question being asked of the player. The Shadow Pokemon pose no additional quandary beyond the usual. The game says we steal now, so I guess that's what we're doing. There's not really any debate or room for it given to the player on whether or not it's the right thing to do. Even though we have a new how, we still don't really get to ask why. But with that being said, there is one of the Shadow Pokemon offered here that does dip into that territory. And so today I want to give it an in-depth look and explore the questions it can pose to the player. So this is Shadow Togepi. Found in XD, it's immediately differentiated from the other shadows by the way that you obtain it. No stealing required, 
No cruel villain lording over this lovely egg creature. Rather, it's freely given to you by the friendly scientist Hortle. Hortle's a normal enough guy, but he used to work as a scientist for the Big Bad Cypher. You know, the evil team making all these shadow Pokemon to begin with. When Hortle learned of their villainy, somehow not putting two and two together at any point during the hiring process, he fled the scene and was able to rescue one Pokemon as he escaped, his lovely Togepi. And you know, maybe he did know all along and had a crisis of conscience at some point, but who's to say? It's a story, and he's telling it. But catching up now with us, he's trying to turn over a new leaf and wants some help purifying his poor buddy Togepi's heart. He's heard of you and your Pokemon purifying ways and thinks you could assist his new friend. And this is where his unique request comes into play. Hortle will freely give you Togepi. No snagging required, no fighting even. But he wants it back after you purify it. Even more interestingly, he does not share that with you until after you bring it back. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. As for right now, he's going to really like the little guy and is hoping we'll help him out. I guess he isn't a big battler or doesn't understand the purification system or something. That's okay though, it can get pretty complicated. You know, best leave that stuff to the experts. You know, like me, random boy that you just met at a truck stop. I'll purify your Pokemon, absolutely. All right, so at this point, we are in total ownership and control of the Togepi. Despite it being Hortles, it is if we have received any other gift Pokemon and we can do as we want with it. The fate of this Togepi is now ours to decide. I am gonna purify it though. That's kind of the main thing that you do with Shadow Pokemon. And while I take care of that process, I want to take a moment to look at the Togepi in detail while we've got it, as there are some things about it that make it extremely unique even one of a kind in a few regards. At this point in Pokemon's history, Togepi as a Pokemon is a member of a small group of species that do not seem to appear in the wild at all, and are only given to the players through one-time gifts. And so in this generation, good old Gen 3, it's not an extremely difficult Pokemon to get a hold of, but it does have a very limited number of appearances. Other than Hortles, Fire Red and Leaf Green offer you a Togepi during the post-game on Five Island, and Colosseum has a Shadow Togetic as the final Shadow Pokemon of the game. Which I know isn't exactly the same, but it can ultimately lead you to a Togepi, so I'm mentioning it here. None of these three methods are going to be excruciating, but rather just take a good deal of time. Which is why I'm mentioning this at all. In most cases, Togepi is a pain, but not ridiculous to get a hold of in Gen 3. Now let's look at the one we just received in particular. First, Portal's Togepi has a custom base happiness of 0, contrasting with the species' usual 70. Happiness is a hidden stat that all Pokemon have that runs from 0 to 255, and it's supposed to act as a kind of indicator of how much a Pokemon likes you. And that can also affect certain evolutions, a few moves, and get you a few items here and there. And so a species' base happiness is the friendliness it has for you right out of the gate. Whether you just caught it, or were given it, or had its friendship reset because of a trade, it defaults to that base number. But a lot of the substance to this whole thing is just flavor, mainly because it's fun to have a relationship with your Pokemon. And that flavor is especially intact here with Togepi, because this isn't our Pokemon. It's Hortles. It's his little buddy. It's like we're taking his angry dog for a walk. And for reference, extremely few Pokemon have zero base happiness. It's usually just the few big bad legendaries with their common disdain for people. So that's the ballpark we're looking at for how this Togepi feels right now. Second from that, and way more overtly, this Togepi comes with one-of-a-kind moves once purified. There's Tri-Attack, a fun normal type move with a chance to either paralyze, burn, or freeze, a real wild card technique, and then Helping Hand, a double battle focus move that boosts your other Pokemon's damage on the turn that it's used. There's no other Togepi or any of its evolutions that get access to these moves otherwise, and the moves can't be passed down through breeding either, so this is the one and only Togepi of this kind. Now fortunately while I was giving that exposition, I was able to get through the process of purifying Togepi and getting it ready for future activities. It's got a bit larger of a heart gauge than most Pokemon at this point in the game, but it's still a relatively quick process. This could easily be where the journey ends, or maybe begins, depending on your feelings on Togepi, but there's that unusual snag with Hortle. Upon returning to him with the now purified Togepi in your party, he decides now is the time to ask for it back. And it is his, after all. He's been on this little mission to help his friend and was just enlisting us to open its heart. And while he is certainly being difficult here, he is not expecting you to have done this for free. 
In exchange for Togepi, Hordal is willing to trade you a special Elekid that he's been raising. Oh, and I'll also add, semi-notably, that if you for some reason decide to purify Togepi, spend the time it takes raising its friendship and getting it to evolve into Togetic, and then decide to trade it back, Hordal will still accept it as his Pokemon and go through with the trade. Can't say I recommend this at all, but it's sort of a nice touch that he knows his specific guy, even if you technically change the species. That's not usually true of in-game trades. And the opposite side of this is true as well. He wouldn't accept any random Togepi, just the one that he sent you, so you can't sneak in a generic one. Alright, so now let's look at the Elekid he's willing to give you in exchange and size it up against Togepi. So here is Zeprong the Elekid. And already I like that name, good electricity pun, and he seems like a feisty little fella. Hordal's got him set up with the three elemental punches and then cross chop for a super dynamic arsenal of attacks. It doesn't have that one-of-a-kind factor that Togepi does, as Elekid learns Thunder Punch naturally, and then the other three moves are all egg moves. But with a little bit of leveling, Zeprong can be an incredibly powerful teammate for a playthrough of XD. So with both Pokemon looked at, this is finally where the question fully comes into play. Should you give Togepi back, or should you steal it? It's totally allowed at this point either way. Portal isn't going to descend upon you if you just ignore him from now on and keep Togepi. But if you do, you're missing out on Elekid as the reward. But make no mistake, no matter what you choose, it's one or the other. Togepi? Or Elekid? You can't have both. I like this exchange so much because of that. You have to make a choice. Sure, there are a couple of meta things you could do to satisfy both options, like running multiple saves or performing the cloning glitch on Togepi. But within the confines of the narrative, you're forced to make a choice. You can't do both. You can't catch them all. And that gives the player the chance to sit with their choice and analyze those options. This is a shadow Pokemon like all the rest. Who has claim to it at the end of the day? Certainly Hordal could open the door to Togepi's heart if he wanted to. Why did we need to do it? Is Hordal being entirely honest about everything? Or to think about it from a different point of view, which one of these options is statistically the best? The unique assets offered by Togepi or the brute strength and coverage offered by Elekid? To me, this doesn't feel the same as the choice you make with a starter, or the one you make between the two box art Pokemon when you're choosing your version. And sure, maybe it's not much, but there's some personal, narrative weight given to this choice by the story and its context. You're not just picking your favorite out of a batch, you're really making a decision. And I love that. It's something I wish Pokemon would do way more often. And obviously there could be an issue there sometimes with even more exclusivity in the collectathon that is Pokemon. But it's cool that if even for a moment, this game has you think about what you're doing before making a call. It makes the journey more custom and more personal as a result. And I think you'd absolutely be right to argue that Pokemon is more or less filled with these types of decisions in a certain way. We only get six party slots after all and crafting your own team goes to create your own personal journey. And that's well and good. It's one of my favorite parts. But consequences like this go a super long way, and they're not explored as often as I would like. So, speaking of, let's cut to the chase. What am I gonna do here? What do I think you should do here? This is a YouTube video after all, so naturally, I have to have a take. Personally, I opt to trade back the Togepi and take the Elekid. Ordal probably should try and find the original owner if it was stolen by Cypher, but I have even less claim to it. His language indicates also that he really loves the little guy, and I think that he's going to do a good job taking care of it. And he just asked me for help purifying it. Now that we've gone through the whole process, I'd feel especially bad yanking the rug out from under him. I do not feel great about keeping the Togepi at this point, but I do feel great about the alternative. Zeprong is a beast! I am such a huge fan of the elemental punches, especially Pokemon that can get all three, even if it isn't totally optimal. It feels like something out of a battle anime, and Zeprong fits that bill to a T. As long as I'm not using Jolteon or Ampharos already, I'm definitely running with this future Electabuzz and its incredible arsenal. XD is a game with limited move tutors and no egg moves, so having Ice Punch here is ultra sweet. There's rare coverage offered by an electric type attacker with an ice type move as a mix up. And as we all already know, that's the best type. Thunder Punch definitely can get swapped out for something better, but Fire Punch and Cross Chop giving Zeprong more options for type mix-ups, even if they aren't entirely ideal, is still such a huge help. 
It all goes to make your eventual Electabuzz a jack of all trades for the purpose of this playthrough. Zaprong can really cover the weak spots for your team in a way that I don't think Togepi can. Also, I like using and transferring around Pokemon with unique NPC trainer IDs. It's one of the few cool, old generation things that sticks on a Pokemon once it's been moved into home, now that they have the game-specific movesets. Togepi sticks with your trainer ID since it was technically a gift, but Zaprong has Hortles, so it's a little something to remember him by if I transfer it around. Someday, Zaprong will be a mighty Electivire and master of the elements, all under my tutelage, so I feel pretty good about taking it. But mainly, I think it's the right thing to do given the circumstances. I don't think there's any real reason to justify taking the Togepi from Hordle, especially considering that zero base happiness when you have it. It wants to be with Hordle, so who am I to get in between that? I understand that he didn't ask for it back right away, and that is difficult, but I want him, and Togepi especially, to be happy, so this seems like the right thing to do. We steal from the bad guys, and Hordle does not seem to be the same as them. So all things considered, you should bring Togepi back like a good Samantha. Hold it! Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're not just gonna give Togepi back to this guy, right? Like, he gave it to you to begin with, and now he wants it back? Because he's <laughs> attached and he misses it? Nah. I think Hortle knows how much more valuable Togepi is than his run-of-the-mill Elekid. No offense, Zaprong. First and foremost, Hortle knows how rare Togepi is, especially in Generation 3. Drumish mentioned earlier how you're gifted an egg containing a level 5 Togepi in the Sevi Islands of Fire Red and Leaf Green, as well as the Shadow Togetic at the absolute very end of Colosseum's postgame. And you can't even breed in Colosseum. But both of those examples do get you a Togepi towards the end of their respective stories. XD's Shadow Togepi is the only reasonable way to use a Togepi on your team to play through the main story in Generation 3 without trading one in from another game. Plus, can we talk about these two incredible unique moves that this Togepi alone has access to? Helping Hand, for one, in a game chock full of double battles is a nice touch, but Try Attack is especially spicy for the Togepi line. Togepi has a 50% chance of having either Hustle, which increases a Pokemon's power by 50%, but sacrifices 20% accuracy across the board, not great unless you can't miss, or the much more interesting ability, Serene Grace. Serene Grace doubles the chance of a move's secondary effect happening, meaning Try Attack goes from a 20% chance to a 40% chance to burn, freeze, or paralyze an opponent. Now, the Togepi line doesn't have terrible options for normal type stab in Generation 3. Double Edge by Level Up, Return, or even Secret Power by TM, Body Slam, Mega Punch, and Mega Kick by Move Tutor, all not bad options for a normal type attacker, but this puppy comes preloaded with Try Attack? Out the gate? Off the lot? Come on now. Personally, I feel like Togepi and its flying evolution Togetic aren't especially adept at battling, but having a move like Try Attack early on definitely helps them out. Not to mention, Togetic's shiny new Gen 4 evolution, Togekiss. You're gonna tell me Try attack Serene Grace Togekiss isn't one of the coolest ideas you've ever heard? And this would be in Generation 4, post-physical special split, where Togekiss can take full advantage of its superior special attack stat with a newly special-oriented Try attack even in Generation 5 if you decide to transfer it further before Togekiss loses its normal typing for Fairy in Generation 6. And keeping this Shadow Togepi is the only way to make this pre-Fairy Tri-Attack Serene Grace Togekiss dream a reality. Compared to Elekid, whose moves are cross-chop in the three elemental punches, Togepi's unique moves are a much better deal. Elekid can learn cross-chop as an egg move, Fire and Ice Punch are both accessible as Egg moves and Move Tutor moves, and Thunder Punch is just a level up move. Zaprong, once evolved into an Electabuzz, would be great for passing these Egg moves down to other Pokemon, but none of its moves are unique to Zaprong in the way Shadow Togepi's moves are unique to solely Shadow Togepi. 
And maybe Hortle knows this. Hortle clearly understands what makes a Pokemon valuable. As far as Elekids go, Zaporong does have a pretty cool moveset. So he offers it to you for Togepi because he's fully aware of how cool this Togepi is. But he didn't put in the work to purify it. You did. Whether that was walking around with Togepi, sending it out into battle, or setting it up in the purify chamber, you made the effort to purify Togepi. It even gets a nice little ribbon to prove it. When you do go to the outskirts stand the first time and talk to Hortle to receive Togepi, that's the only time the story ever leads you there. There aren't other story beats leading you back to the outskirts stand. The only incentive, really, is its shop, so you might not even know this trade exists if you don't check back in with Hortle. And maybe you just so happen to stop to chat with that one scientist who gave you a Shadow Togepi, but that's up to your own curiosity. How often do you check back in with an NPC after they give you a Pokemon? Like, when's the last time you asked this guy what's new and exciting? But even if you talk to Hortle again, he doesn't offer his Elekid for trade unless Togepi's in your party, so odds are you remain blissfully ignorant of this downgrade of a trade altogether. And this is purely subjective at this point, but I just like the Togepi line more than the Elekid line. And I like the Elekid line a lot, but Togepi, I mean, I don't know, come on, look at this thing. It's exceptional. <laughs> so hang on to your hard boiled, I mean, hard earned egg. You've put in the time for it and you're under no obligation to return it, no matter what Mr. Moral McHigh Horse over here has to say. Okay, well, sure. I suppose you could also take the Togepi, if it really means that much to you. It's not like this is my video, or anything. But sure, draw your own conclusions. At the very least, that is once again the beauty of the situation that is so fascinating to me. I appreciate narrative consequence and decision making like this, as small as it may be, so 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 much for a world like Pokemon. And I think they did a good job here combining a narrative decision with a mechanical one. If I was to make a critique of the series at large in relation to this, and I will, it would be how often the game set you up to think about things like this, but rarely if ever forced you to get your hands dirty. That being one of the main reasons for discussing this at all. Wonderful, fantastic games like Black and White question the player in a lot of ways crafting a story that makes you think about these types of consequences, but never really have you draw any lines in the sand. And that makes sense. Pokemon isn't really about that type of thing, and the decision making is pretty linear to go along with that. But it is cool when it does happen, because it's another lens to examine this amazing world through. It is why I thought I would share one of those stories with you today. And hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. Alright folks, that's all I got for you. Thanks a load if you made it this far. Let me know down below what you thought, what you want to see in the future, and any and all opinions on the matter at hand. Huge special shout out to my buddy Caprio for putting together the counter argument and helping me get this whole thing together. He's great, he's doing his own fun Pokemon stuff. Please check him out, links will be in the description. It's been fun, I'll see you next time. Drumish out. <laughs>